everybody. My name is Thomas Houston, and I'm super excited to be making this video as part of the Framers Only <laughs> Virtual Trade Show. Woo! And I'm going to show you how to wrap fabric mats. And hopefully there's some of you that are watching this that have never done it before. What I'm gonna show you here is the basics of wrapping a single rectangular mat. I'm gonna show you the basics of wrapping a single oval mat. I'm going to show you how to wrap a continuously covered uh, wooden liner. This is one of Frank's Fabrics uh, pre-primed liners. This is not gonna be wrapped necessarily. It's gonna be a stepped mat, which is a little bit different, but it's super cool. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And <clears throat> I'm gonna show you how to wrap individual legs of a, uh, of a primed wooden liner. This is, uh, this is fabric glue. And um, basically what you do with this is uh, you roll it on, you let it dry. And if you have a vacuum heat press, that's going to be a great tool for you to use. Um, you don't have to have one, but it opens myriad possibilities. Uh, another great tool that you'll use become friends with is one of these uh, disc cutters. Super sharp, but they're super good. They keep your, your fabrics trimmed uh, nicely and it keeps the threads from flying everywhere, uh, particularly with some of the natural silks that can be a little unwieldy uh, in terms of their threadiness. That's a technical term, threadiness. Uh, so yeah, get one of these. Uh, various other tools that you'll use lots of rollers. Um, this is your standard issue hardware store paint roller. Uh, this is pretty cool. These foam rollers, they hold a lot of glue and they put a really fine layer on the, on the mats. Um, these are pretty cool. These are kind of cool in that you can get a really thin edge, a line of glue down, you know, might be useful, particularly for, um, covering the bevels, uh, various other things, palette knives. Uh, I use a burnishing bone uh, a lot in all of the mat wrapping and I'll show you how. Paintbrush, X-Acto knife, uh, sponge brushes can be useful, uh, ATG tape, and even this really awesome uh, this is foil archival barrier tape. And um, depending on what you're, you're matting, depending on what you're framing, this can be useful as an added measure on the back. Um, oh, also, <clears throat> your awesome tacking iron can be a, a super good tool. This is one of the really nice ones that is pointy and it has a thermostat that you can set you can, and um, you can actually mount fabric with these they get super hot or you can turn it down um, but the fact that it's pointy and it's got a really nice edge you can use this for finessing uh, the bevels and finessing is the key word with this uh, fabric mats are a premium product that you that you will sell that you will sell and uh, so finessing all of the details just like the rest of your framing uh, is super important finessing the corners with the fabric and I'll show you about that and um, whether it's a liner or a mat finessing your bevels making sure everything is really nice and beautiful and tidy okay <laughs> is there film in the camera okay here we go First thing I'm gonna show you is how to roll the glue on the mat. And what I like to do is, uh, that's my dog in the back. <clears throat> and uh, I like to use scraps of mat board as, uh, as a pallet instead of a tray for the glue. Uh, it's, uh, it's one less thing to have to deal with when you're done. You don't have to rinse out a tray or anything. I actually like to start with two pieces of mat board. The first one 
basically cleans the roller. Uh, this is a standard paint roller. Uh, you can use them over and over and over again uh, if you rinse them out and dry them each time. They do get funky after a while. But uh, so the first board, I don't know if you can see this and that's okay, you get the idea. But any little specks of whatever will come off the roller on, on this one rather than on your board. So that's that. It's a, it's a sacrifice, that's okay. So let me come over here and put a little bit of glue on. Basically what you're wanting to do is get a nice even layer of glue on your mat <clears throat> and making sure that the bevel is really good and covered as well. And uh, did I say I've been doing this for a long time? I think I had, I think I did. Um, this is coming out a little more soupy than I would like. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna push some of the glue out. <clears throat> this, uh, this roller I washed out a little earlier so it had some water on it. So there. That's okay. I'm just gonna come over here, and then we're gonna do this. So basically, what you're gonna do is make sure that the bevel is really nice and covered, and um, and once you've got this, you can see how I pick up the roller. I don't just roll it back and forth, but I actually pick it up. So the roller. Uh, rolls out a really smooth layer of glue. I'm probably going over this more than I normally would for the sake of this demonstration, but that's what we do. So basically what you're going to do is put glue on the mat and then we're going to set it aside and it's going to dry. It takes a few minutes to dry and then we put the fabric on it and um, put it in our heat press and the glue is heat activated. Uh, it's not the only way you can do it. If you don't have a heat press, you can actually do this, but you have to wait until the, the glue is uh, still tacky, but not dry, but not wet either. Because you, depending on what kind of fabric you're wrapping, uh, if it's a sheer silk, you don't, obviously, you don't want to have the glue soaking through the fabric. Um, so there's a lot of different kinds of fabrics that you can you can use. You can you can use any kind of fabric. Uh, it's fantastic. So um, I keep a blade on hand so that any little fibers that aren't supposed to be here, you can you can take them out. And I de I deliberately chose to use a sheer white silk for this demonstration because it can be one of the more challenging for this very reason <clears throat> in that it shows any little fibers that might end up in your glue. So uh, this is what we do. Okay, so that's, that's good. And then you can see that your bevel is really nice really nicely covered with the glue. Now, when you're cutting a mat <clears throat> that's gonna be wrapped with fabric, you always save the fallout. That's key. And you mark the position that the fallout fell out of your mat. So that when you put the fabric over it, you put the fallout back in exactly the way it came out, put it all in your press, and that's what gives you a really nice, crisp, beautiful, beveled, fabric edge there. So on that note, we're going to let this dry and come right back just like in a real cooking show. Okay, very good. So uh, this glue now is just ever so slightly tacky, and but that's okay. It's totally okay. And one of the things I wanted to mention about making this premium product 
handcrafted product in your shop is that I always use uh, really nice archival rag board for the the basic substrate of the of the wrapped mat um, just because it all is part of the highest quality product that you're making so plus they cut really nicely in terms of the bevels the glue uh, if you were to use a, a lower quality mat board to put the glue on sometimes the moisture on the mat it gets funky so use the best quality materials in everything you do and everybody will be happy so on that note what we're gonna do and as I mentioned earlier I've marked it here this actually has it has a weighted uh, margin anyway so this is the orientation that the fallout is going to go back in so we take our our silk and um, as I mentioned sheer white silk is some of the most challenging which is why I chose to use it for this demonstration so I could show you all of the precautions in terms of getting specs out if you were if you were wrapping a mat say with a really dark fabric there are many things that i'm doing that you wouldn't have to worry about um, it's just that with this kind of material everything can and will show through so the beautiful thing about doing it this way as, as I mentioned, the, the glue is dry. This doesn't have a lot of grain showing, uh, but if it did, it really gives you the opportunity to adjust your fabric left, right, up, down. If there's any slubs that you don't want, you can move it. Basically, you can just position it perfectly and smooth it out. <clears throat> And you can see all of these threads here. You just have to make sure that nobody snuck underneath. And uh, that's where we're going. So this is the orientation mark. We're gonna put this on here, like so, and press it down nicely in here. Just like, just like that. Our press is already heated up. And there we go. Excellent. That's great. All right, so sometimes, depending on if it's a big mat, bigger than this, I, uh, I sometimes put a weight on them to let them cool, put a piece of mat board on top of them to let them, let them cool down but we don't need to do that in this case. So you can see, I think you can see, we have a really nice, we have a really nice bevel here. And so uh, what I'm gonna do next is uh, trim off the extra fabric. And um, as with many things in life and in framing, there's more than one way to do it. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to show you one way to do it here. Basically, I'm going to trim off the, the outside and then flip it over and then trim out the inside, leaving extra fabric to wrap around the bevel. So these single edge uh, razor blades are super good. Uh, always keep sharp blades, clean hands, and pure thoughts when you're doing this work. It's good. Okay, now flip it back over. Now what we're gonna do is with our blade, and hopefully you can see this, we're gonna come right up to within a couple of threads of the edge of the corner. Uh, and we're gonna cut out like so. And we're gonna come over to the next one. 
And if you've never done this before, and as I said, hopefully some of you that are watching this have never done it before, and it will excite you about doing this kind of work, offering these awesome products in your shop. And uh, so then we're gonna come in about an inch or so. Trim this. This gives you enough fabric to wrap around the back. Like so. And then of course on large mats, what falls out of the middle can conceivably be wrapped on another mat, which is where your um, organizational genius comes into play. We have rolls under this table of fabric, fabric remnants, and uh, keeping those organized is uh, it's a great thing. And um, okay, now as I mentioned before, there is more than one way to do this. And um, for this mat, for this demonstration, I'm gonna show you how to, how to uh, wrap the back, putting a piece of ATG, this quarter inch ATG down here, like so. Um, pull this off. And um, similarly to wrapping your outside edges, and using your fabric glue out there, you can also run a bead of fabric glue back here and roll your fabric back on it <clears throat> and let it dry and possibly use your tacking iron back there. But I'm just gonna show you this way for simplicity right here. There we go. Okay, now <clears throat> what we're gonna do is pull this over. And what I really like to do uh, with these is allow myself enough fabric that you can really grab onto it with your fingers and gently pull it straight back in the middle. We start in the middle and we work in opposite directions. And um, Gonna take that out like so, and just working your way gently forward, kind of pulling out, and a little bit of an angle just to work it. So you get a really nice, you get a really nice edge there. Pulling it back as you go, like so. And some of the more, some of the thicker natural silks, uh, you know, heavier fabrics like uh, burlap, some things they take a little bit more coaxing to get them to lay down. But basically we're just gonna go right up to the corner and then back this way and we're going to continue on with this rolling the fabric around the back it's going to, it's going to keep working it out from the side right up to the corner and as you can see here I trimmed it out within a few uh, threads of the actual corner. You want to get it as close as you can, but you don't really want to trim it right up to the edge of the board. And I'll show you why in a few minutes. Check it out from the front. See how great of a job you did. And, um, if there's any place, for example, that you feel like it might need to be tighter, you can pull this up and give it another pull that way. Just tighten it up against the, the bevel. But it should be pretty nice as long as you've got a good, 
covering of glue on the bevel of the mat. <clears throat> there we go. Just like that. Now what we're going to do is um, take off the extra ATG tape. And as I've said a couple of times, there's more than one way to do these, and I've done it in lots of different ways over the 36 years I've been doing this. Lots of different ways to do it. So now we're going to take our blade and we're just going to cut just a little bit out from the width of the ATG tape so you get a nice clean edge on the back. thing about doing these yourself in terms of pricing is once you become a little bit familiar with all of the steps and all of the materials uh, you really have to figure that in to your labor but since it's a premium product uh, that's a good thing. That's what you want to do. So that's basically, that's basically that. And you, okay, so what we're going to do now is finesse these corners, which is very important. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit. You can use a drop of your fabric glue. You can use a tiny bit archival paste. It just takes a tiny amount back here. I actually like to use archival paste because of how stiff it is and uh, you can really coax those fibers back. And I'll show you what I mean. This is where I like to take um, burnishing bone because it's nice and smooth and I finesse this back this way, just like so. And uh, you can get a really super nice uh, corner this way. stray threads you can just keep working them sometimes you might need to put a little bit more another drop of glue back there good thing about these burnishing bones is uh, you can you can clean them off wash them off with water you can uh, take sandpaper and shape them you can make them really pointy or really rounded on the end you can just make your own customized tool um, I have a couple of these and um, I've probably had this one for 20 years at least and you can see how the tip of it is sort of rounded sometimes they get broken but then you can take sandpaper and round it again it makes them really smooth really nice so that is as they say that this one just takes a tiny bit to do the job. And that, 
as you work your way around, if any of the other threads pop back up, you can just keep working it back. There you have it. There's a single silk wrapped mat ready to go.